Good afternoon, Honors Bio. This is Mr. McGee, and I'm going to make a tutorial for you today on Google Sheets and show you how to make this with your Corn Lab procedure. First, you are going to need to get into your Google Classroom account, and you go up here to About, and you can see where I have the template. Click on this template to get to your Google Sheets. Now, yours is going to be blank, but thank you, courtesy of Sam Lovell. He gave me his data so I can use this as part of the demonstration, but again, you'll have to enter your data in here. First of all, you're going to need to calculate your mean. And to calculate your mean, you can do it by hand or you can just click on an empty cell and go up here to average. And then you just highlight the raw data that you want and hit enter. You can continue doing this for every single cell by highlighting it and hitting enter. Or you could copy one cell that's calculated, control C, and then highlight extra cells and hit control V. And it pastes the result of that data that it wants to. For range, you are going to have to do this by hand. In this case, I already have it calculated here, so I'm just going to enter it really quickly. Uh, let's see here. And that's pretty much it. We are going to have to take a look, however, at decimal places. Notice there's not much consistency, and that's because sometimes Google Sheets has things set to default. So what you're going to want to do next is change your decimal points. I like to highlight my raw data from the trials, and I am going to go up here to decimal points and make them one decimal point of precision. Uh, your lab, you might have had a little more precision because you were weighing these seeds, so it just depends on how accurately you recorded these. For your mean and range, a rule of thumb is because it's processed, I like to have one more uh, decimal point than my raw data had. So I'm going to add two, whoops, go back here to two decimal points and because the raw data only has one. Okay. And that is pretty much it. That is our graph. Notice this is your independent variable, and it's got its numbers and everything, all of its increments. This entire set of columns is your dependent variable. However, the only one we really care about is the mean. And again, the reason why is because we only use the trials so that we can get a more accurate mean. But when we graph, again, we only care about the independent variable and the average of the dependent variable. That's pretty much it. So with that said, make sure you got your title for your independent variable and your units in there. So let's say your unit, it's nice to put it in parentheses, let's say it was a milliliter of whatever you were doing, uh, say the number of drops of, or the amount of acid or the amount of salt water in milliliters. What you do not do is this. Do not put a unit after every single number because when you go to graph, it will not graph out. Google might be better, but Microsoft Excel definitely not. Again, do not put a unit after every single number like I'm doing. You want to get rid of those and just have raw numbers like this. Now that we've got our table, let's go ahead and copy it into our lab report. You just highlight it and go right click copy and go to a Google Sheets or uh, Microsoft uh, document or something, and you have your lab report. This is my ridiculous lab report here, and I'm just going to go here and hit Control, Paste. I don't know why they do this, but I'm just going to paste it on linked. It doesn't matter. And there's my table. Make sure it's nice and formatted. You can resize things like this if you want to, but you know it's kind of up to you if you want to change it like that. So let's go back here and let's make our graph now. Google Sheets is very nice when it comes to graph making. In this case, we're going to highlight our x-axis of our graph, which is our independent variable. And our y-axis is our dependent variable mean. But to highlight this, you're going to have to hit Control and then highlight the mean. So again, highlight the independent variable, let go of your mouse, and then hit Control and now highlight this separately. We just told the computer that this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and watch what happens when I go up here to insert a chart. It already knows where things are going. And all I have to do now is come over here to the data column chart. We don't want a bar graph. We want to go down to scatter plot. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So we have a nice looking scatter plot. But I want to customize it because we want to get a tread line. And not to mention, we probably want to add a little bit more to this too. 
So if you need to change a little bit of stuff here, you can change the chart style, axis, all that stuff here. But I really quickly would like to look at series. Click on the series. You can see that's under customize. And if this closes, you can always get to it by double clicking on the, on the graph. And you go over to customize again and to series. What you're going to want to do is come down here on series and click on tread line. Now notice it by default puts on a linear tread line and this is obviously not a linear curve. You are going to want to pick a curve that fits your data the best. You can pick any one of these. I think a polynomial probably fits this curve. It's not a perfect fit. Perhaps this data point was a little higher. Maybe these are just all out of place. You pick whatever data or whatever tread line fits it. If all of your data is zigzagging across or it's a straight line, you might want to pick a linear curve. But again, I will let you decide that. You pick a tread line that best fits your data. That's really what it boils down to. Okay, so now that we have our series and our tread line, everything else is just a matter of tidying it up. Personally, I'm not a fan of grid lines. I'm going to come over here and just say major grid line. I don't want them. And uh, horizontal axis grid lines, I don't want those either. So I don't want vertical or horizontal grid lines. Okay. And it looks like I just did something. And that brings up another point. What do you do if your graph all of a sudden screws up? Well, you can always start back from zero, but I would just hit control Z and control Z. It always brings it back very nicely like this. So it's not really that big of a deal. So just be careful. Another thing I wanted to show everybody on what to do here is go back to customize. And if you go back to series, you can do what's called an error bar. Now, we will talk about this a little bit more later, especially if you take IB. But if you click on error bars, we can see roughly from our range what kind of error we have. It's safe to say with some of our labs, you may have had a high degree of error depending on how big your range was. But if you're noticing a range that is very high compared to what your average is, I mean, if you look at it, it's spread considerably far. You may have an error of, say, 50% or more. Uh, a good rule of thumb, though, is in science, you want an error of less than about 5%. So in this case, 5% error, you can see these error bars are nice and small. But in your lab, it might be an error of, say, 50%. And I would think in our lab, it really just depends. I will let you play with that error bar. but Definitely think how high is your error from your range when you look at the mean, and you can enter that in. Error bars were not a requirement of this lab, but you can enter that in because it makes your lab look that much cooler, and obviously people think you're that much more of a scientist. So again, make sure you're uh, make sure these are properly titled. It just kind of it just put mean in there, but you're going to probably want to click on that and change this to uh, uh, say average say average uh, change in mass and then we'll put in grams there okay uh, you can always change your chart titles like that and of course pick a better heading than what's up there now what we're going to do is click on the graph hit control C and it's not letting me copy it especially when I'm doing a little activity like this all right, let's see if it lets me copy it. Okay, we'll do this. Click on the graph, go up here to edit, copy, and let's see if in our Word it lets us paste our graph. And we'll paste on link, and look at that, it let us paste our graph. So there you go. When you write your lab report, I'll zoom out a little bit, you can have your data section, and you just post your table and your graph in it just like that. And it looks really nice, scientific, and your parents will be proud of you. I'll be proud of you too, and you'll be on the way to a very good uh, future in science. So with that said, make sure you have your lab report due on Friday. Again, if this is overwhelming to you, you can do this by hand, but let me know if you have questions. I will see you later. Have a good day.